The CEO and co-founder of Vector Space Biosciences, the company behind the cryptocurrency VXV and SBio, just went into a very in-depth interview with someone from the NASDAQ. And I really do think this is an interview that we should watch. We've been covering all things decentralized science on this channel, and I really want to get into this, especially if you guys were wondering why the coin has been pumping so much, VXV. SBio hasn't really been moving all that much, but that's because it's a lot smaller. It's a lot less responsive in some senses, which is counterintuitive, but I don't think many people know how to purchase this coin. Anyways, SBio is up at 70 cents, 67.9 cents, up 0.6 on the day. But if we go look just a couple days ago, two days ago or three days ago, it was at 50 cents. So this is like a 40% pump, which is pretty dramatic. VXV on the other hand, because it's more liquid, more people know where to buy it, it the chart looks a lot smoother. It's up from 19 cents to 26 cents up almost 30% on the day. Shout out Josh for finding this interview and posting it online. He posted a clip from it. He cut off the intro, so we're gonna watch the intro because I wanna give this reporter the respect she deserves. Jane did a phenomenal job, a phenomenal job interviewing the CEO and co-founder, um, Cajun Frank. So, Cajun Franks. So, let's get right into it and start listening and see what's up. Specific applications in space biosciences will benefit all humankind indefinitely while also leading to new discoveries and applications of precision and personalized bad. medicine. With me is the CEO of Vector Biosciences. Vector Space Biosciences. Vector Space Biosciences. I Put some Frank. So respect great to on have the you name. Here. What a fascinating company and industry. I guess just what is space biosciences? Explain that. Well, uh, thanks for having me here. Uh, I would like to explain, first off, that we're probably not going to establish, well, with 100% with certainty, we're not establishing a lunar base, we're not going to Mars if we don't understand how to protect and repair the human body during spaceflight. And that's what we work toward. We work on countermeasures, understanding countermeasures like maybe drug repurposing or drug development, drug design, but also understanding the stressors like radiation and microgravity that can impact human health during spaceflight. So if we understand how to create these countermeasures, maybe repurpose drugs as mentioned, and then apply those to maybe areas of precision medicine, it's not just about benefiting you know, astronauts or billionaires in space, but developing new therapies in precision medicine for everybody on the ground. Yeah, so you can take that research that you've done bring it back to Earth and maybe apply it to? Yes, uh, it's very similar. M most people have heard of the drug Keytruda, yes. developed by Merck. Mm -hmm. Well, just so happens, the reason that drug is so effective today is because they launched experiments on the ISS over oh. a period of years. Interesting. Bristol Myers Squibb is doing the same thing. Yeah. Ex so we just listed two competitors, actually, if you want to think about it like that, because right now, VXV, Vector Space Bioscience, rather not VXV, VXV is just the cryptocurrency. The company, Vector Space Biosciences, is doing experiments on how to better help astronauts in outer space. And we see that there are other companies, like the two he just listed, Merck and uh, Squibb, I forget, uh, Bristol-Myers Squibb, who did research on drugs and how they impact humans in space and then brought it back to the earth and were able to make monumental changes because of those drugs. Very, very massive drugs. So a company like this is not just reliant on us getting to Mars or getting to um, a lunar base anytime soon, although they do touch on that in this video. It is also a way for us to conduct research and get more valuable information, especially on how things are going to impact the human genome, everything, the human body, in a more pure environment. Explain your team and how are they qualified to study this and how the company's organized? Sure. So we uh, first we'd like to highlight our scientific advisory board. And we have got a variety of organizations, scientific institutions, such as Lawrence Berkeley National Lab, University College of London, Imperial College of London, UC Berkeley, City of Hope, UCSD, that's UC San Diego, and Cal Poly, of course, uh, where we construct and design CubeSats that are launched, biological CubeSats that are launched into space. And so our team is made up of scientists and engineers, and of course, all kinds of personnel that make all of this happen, including the, the registration with the FCC and the FAA and NOAA, 
uh, so that we can actually do the launches. Right. And then, of course, we have to have the scientific <laughs> expertise compliant. to design the experiments or work with biotechs and pharmas to design the experiments and launch them. And then, most importantly, uh, I would say maybe equally importantly, would be understanding the data associated to it. So we use language modeling, which is the tip of the spear in AI today, yeah. to better understand relationships between drug compounds and proteins and how they can benefit or protect the human body during space well, flight. It's amazing how so many different industries are working together <laughs> for this. You got pharma yeah. and tech and space. And this what is, would be the total addressable market yes, with this? This is the well, gold. It, this is the question. Huge. But I, <laughs> let me just say it's a combination of artificial intelligence, which is analyzing the data, gaining new insights from the data, and of course, life sciences. So, how big is AI? How big is life sciences? And now, how big is the space industry going to be? And how big is space? <laughs> Infinite, right? So uh, humans will be populating other planets, starting with the moon. This is where we're all headed right now. It's the new space race, and it's never going to stop. So protecting the human body in space yeah. with benefits to everybody on the ground, the total addressable market is almost incalculable. Do you want to take a guess on when we'll be inhabiting the moon? Well, I would... <laughs> well, I, I, we almost don't have to guess, uh, because NASA has plans on humans inhabiting the moon. 2024 uh, with Artemis 2, the launch. Okay. Well, at least to scope things out, you might right. say. Yeah, but okay. uh, yeah, it looks like, uh, you know, just within the next 10 years, we will have a permanent presence on the moon. How interesting. Um, are there other companies doing something? That's similar? crazy. That's crazy. My man just said in the next 10 years, we will have a permanent lunar moon base. That is absolutely insane. Here I am thinking this is like a two, three decade long play investing into a company like this for the anticipated base off of the planet Earth, right? You don't expect anything like that to come anytime soon, which is why I think that intro to get you kind of hooked on the company itself is a smart way to go about it. Be like, hey, look, we don't need to go exist in space as a species for our company to succeed. We can do research in space on these drugs and then bring them back to Earth. But he's just saying right there that not only are we expected to go and build a lunar base within the next 10 years, but that the addressable market, the total addressable market, you saw me kind of tweaking out a little bit about that because that's very exciting. Think about the idea that this one company, which we can invest into despite not being publicly listed on the stock market, we'll get into that in a moment, is gonna be encompassing AI, is gonna be encompassing life sciences, and the entire space race. Now. The space race in and of itself could be a multi-trillion dollar market cap. Obviously, it is a multi-trillion dollar total addressable market, but it doesn't mean that it's going to get there anytime soon. We really need to like have a rational point of view on how long it's going to take the, us to get to a monetarily profitable space race, right? We can go in and dump money into it, but it doesn't mean it's going to have any kind of return as an investor. So we got to make sure we're paying attention for those returns. But the combination of those three things is just huge, super exciting, and being someone who is very passionate about longevity, the only way that humans as a species can have that longevity is if we leave the planet. So a company that is kind of initiating that initial, like, let's get off the planet, that, that ground footwork to get here to become a multi-planetary species is something like this, because we can build the spaceships and the Elon Musks and the... Um, Jeff Bezos's of the world can get spaceships to make it so we can travel, but if we can't do it in a healthy way, we'll die before we get to any planet. So very exciting about that. I don't know that you can put a number on the total addressable market, but it's very, very, very large. They have multiple coins here, and this is where I think a lot of people get confused because he doesn't really mention VXV, but he's going to mention SBIO in a couple moments. There's a clear and utterly important distinction between the two. I'm going to let it play, though. Well, you know, as mentioned, uh, we've got Merck and we've got Bristol-Myers Squibb. These are competitors. Uh, understanding how to, you know, crystallize proteins or drug compounds because in microgravity because they become more effective. But you also have other small launching companies that are interested in launching payloads uh, related to biology. Yeah. Uh, but we don't have any direct competitors in that area. Uh, 
we have more along the lines of something that we, we'd like to call co-optation. Okay, so explain the process and, and how you use AI to, I guess, synthesize this data that you get. Like, how does that work exactly? Sure, so uh, it's important to understand the divisions within our company that, that make this happen. We've got a biosciences division. We've also got a hardware and CubeSat division where the CubeSats are designed and launched. And then we've got an AI and language modeling division. So it starts with designing the experiments and working with the biotechs or pharmas or even materials companies to better understand how maybe a material might change under microgravity. But we're, our particular focus is biosciences. So when we establish an experiment, design an experiment, and then launch the experiment via a biological CubeSat, data is beamed back to Microsoft's Azure Space platform where there's a ground station that we collect the data. And then we can augment that data or add additional data and then apply a language model or a series of language models on, on top of that data. And then the real magic happens where you've got data interpretation, new insights, and maybe even novel discoveries that can occur once we visualize that data and help scientists interpret the data. Wow. Not sure if you just captured what he just said. This company is vertically integrated across the entire spectrum. So not only are they designing the research studies to do and what to pay attention to, they're launching them into space. And then they're also grabbing that data using AI to analyze it, but in-house, they're not outsourcing that. They are an AI company that can then create comparisons that otherwise would not be observed. Humans, as smart as we are, we cannot compare and contrast things to the scale that even the current AI models can. They're gonna find things that humans realistically will take years to find and like an entire team, one AI can do it all at once. It's extremely fascinating how powerful these things are, but they are doing the entire thing. And it, I may be mistaken in saying this, but I also believe that Vector Space Biosciences has a DAO token that they will be launching in the not too distant future, meaning they will also be funding their own research. So they won't have to go looking for grants and have to go looking for VC funds to give them the money to do all of this, right? It's very, very fascinating to see a literally very well thought out, vertically integrated company like this. And I just wanted to make sure everyone was fully aware of that, caught so everything he said. So you are publicly traded, SBIO, right? Yes, SBIO is a security token. So okay, okay, so tell, tell me about that. So as a security token, uh, it, it is a cryptocurrency. Okay. And this means that it represents equity of the company as a registered security token. And this also means that it is a publicly traded vehicle as well, okay. but also with uh, what I'd like to call exposure to a truly global capital marketplace. And th that is the crypto markets. And are, is it in a particular exchange? How can somebody find that token? Uh, yes, uh, we, la we launched it on initially on lbank.com. Okay. So you can find it trading there. And we do have plans on moving to Coinbase and Kraken and a few other big names. Okay, and any plans for any other types of listings outside of tokens? Well, uh, we are considering NASDAQ, mm -hmm. I can tell you. So, well, that's in our future. Okay. Yeah, we'll see where it goes. Well, very exciting and exciting. I'm curious to see if they will list the token on the NASDAQ or if they're gonna create a new share structure because that it, SBIO is a security. It is the same as owning a share of the company. Okay, this is the big distinction that nobody seems to be able to wrap their head around, especially in crypto. SBIO is a security token, meaning you own part of the company when you buy SBIO. You have an equity stake in the company. That is not the same for something like Ethereum. If you own ETH, you have no equity stake in anything. All you have is a token that is used for gas fees. That is the only utility for Ethereum, right? Same with VXV. It is a token built on top of Ethereum in which you can use as a membership key to gain access to some of the research that they've done. VXV is a utility token which is like a membership, okay? It's like a Costco membership card. You have VXV, you're allowed access to the research. You're allowed into the ecosystem. You own SBIO, you have equity stake ownership, actual ownership into the company, which is why I am in the process of selling some of my VXV to grab some SBIO because I want equity, I want ownership in this stuff. I don't necessarily need the utility token, although I think both can do well. I think both will trade in, pretty much the same fashion, right? You can see this point blank here. 
since this interview came out and people started getting aware of VXV and SBIO again, SBIO went from 50 cents up to 67 cents, and Vector Space Bio, or VXV went from 17 cents up to 26 cents, right? So they're moving in unison, but they're different. They're very different things. They're very different products. Your time is your most valuable asset. This interview, I thought, was extremely valuable, especially if you own either of those coins and you've been confused at all or you just wanna hear the CEO, the co-founder talk a little bit. It's always good to keep up to date on your investments. Make sure you like, subscribe, and I will see you guys in the next video.